You actually forgot one thing here, Dad, which is pretty cool. So you've heard of prop rods for hoods. How about a prop rod? Check this out for the rear trunk area. So now I can get to the spare without the cover falling down all the time. Ladies and gentlemen, next to me is the brand new Jeep Wrangler JL Rubicon. It is probably, no, make that definitely one of the most off-road capable cars you could buy from the factory. But we just bought a car that, well, is almost as off-road capable. In fact, it is as good on the highway as a BMW X5. It is as luxurious inside as a Range Rover, and it is as good off-road as a Jeep Wrangler. And it's right here. Yep, it's a 2004 Volkswagen Touareg or Touareg if you live in the UK. Hey guys, if you're looking to buy a used car, don't take any chances on its history. Avoid any nasty surprises by using Car Vertical's complete vehicle check that covers whether the car has had any accidents, whether mileage is accurate, whether it's been stolen, and much more from just $9.99 per report. Find out everything you want to know with just a VIN number at carvertical.com. And this has to be one of the most underappreciated, one of the least understood, and yet one of the most off-road capable cars that you can buy. Plus, get this, it tows 7,500 pounds, which is about the same that you'd get out of a Gladiator. Let's get started and show you just how luxurious this vehicle is. And for that, I need my man Tommy. The Monroney. If you see right here, this vehicle cost $53,000 in 2004, which is $76,000 in today's money. And I'm gonna tell you what, at the end of this video, we're gonna tell you how much we bought this car for, and you're not gonna believe it. But first, let's take a look at the luxury features on the inside and get an idea of why it's so special. Back in the early 2000s, Volkswagen was flush with money and they were throwing it around like a, well, drunken sailor on leave. And this, in a lot of ways, was their moonshot. Okay, there was also the Phaeton, but really, this was the vehicle that was gonna combine performance, off-roading, and luxury. And like I said, let's start with luxury because, well, I think nothing epitomizes that more than this button right here. Let me show you what it does. Most cars have a seat belt that comes out right here. And of course, the shoulder height is adjusted either manually or there's some kind of a mechanism where the belt slides, depending on how tall you are, up and down. But not the Touareg. Oh no, that would not be luxurious enough. With this button, I can raise or lower the shoulder height electrically. Of course, most luxury cars have memory seats, but they're usually just on the driver's side. Not this vehicle, oh no. It has three positions of memory seats, both on the driver's side and on the passenger side. Plus that little electric sliding seat belt, both sides. Yeah, yeah, there was no expense spared when they developed this, and Tommy will show that by kind of going over the HVAC. Volkswagen wanted to make extra sure that everyone was at the perfect temperature. So this Touareg has four zone climate control. So that means each of the four passengers in this car is at the perfect temperature. Automatic climate control as well. We also have four heated seats, five position heated seats, and while we're talking about the HVAC system, we also should talk about this little button right here, which is the automatic recirc button. And what this does is if the car senses some nasty stuff in the air outside, it'll automatically turn on the recirc on the interior. Plus, when you squirt the windshield with that nasty antifreeze liquid that's not good to breathe, the car will turn on the automatic recirc for 20 seconds as well. Speaking of climate control, there's also a really special thing in the glove box. Hey Tommy, before we show them that fifth zone of climate control, let me show them this. Look at that. That is a little tiny flashlight that plugs into, well, over here in the front, the 12 volt outlet, but there's also a place you can plug it in the back if you needed light at night. Show them. Yeah, check this out. There's this little itty bitty flap. It's actually spring loaded. There it goes. And, oh, it just closed itself. Come on. And then, if you plug it in like that and it'll charge up 
Plus, check this out. I don't know if you noticed this, Dad, but you actually have three different zones of airflow in, in the back seat as well, which is just nuts. That fifth climate zone, well, it's actually in the glove box of all places. This is actually a little bit of clever engineering. There's a little knob in the glove box, and when you spin it, it allows air from the climate control system to enter into the glove box and act like a cooler if you have the AC on. Another really thoughtful touch is over here. Now, you do have, of course, a leather-bound owner's manual in this vehicle. This was 76 grand in today's money. So, of course, it's got its own little cubby. It doesn't take away space from the rest of the glove box. And check this out. I mean, look how high quality that is. It's got the Volkswagen emblem there and... Oh, super nice. And in case you want to know what time of day it is, Volkswagen has thoughtfully put a little tiny computer up here so it tells you that you're facing south, it's 3.17 in the afternoon, or if you don't know what the date is, you can switch it over to the date, and it's, uh, well, it's not 1.15. We need to probably reprogram that. This is so over the top that well, let me show you these little details that you won't find in many other cars. First and foremost, of course, you will find a sunshade, but when you open it up, you'll note that it's illuminated all the way around, not just on the sides. But it also does this. So you can have not one, but two sunshades, one to block the sun out from the side, and of course, one to block it ahead of you. Now that, my friends, is luxury. And of course, you don't want the sun blinding you from this little space above the rearview mirror, so there's a separate little sunshade right there that blocks the sun so that you can look into the rearview mirror and actually see what's behind you. Look at that. How many cars have that? I would say probably only the Touareg, at least as far as I know. Of course, the Touareg comes with not one, but uh, two cup holders, but you know what, that's not all because let's say that you have the need for three drinks. Well, Volkswagen thought of that. First, there's a regular cubby hole, which is what you'd expect, but if you look here, there's a second little tab that you can push. Opens up a second cubby. Store your phone here, maybe, but check this out. Push, and you have a monster cup holder for that big super drink or coffee mug or whatever you happen to be drinking while driving. Even the center council is crazy over-engineered. This first gen Touareg came out in 2002 and I think it's kind of the perfect size. There's a quote in one of the magazine reviews that said that Volkswagen said that it was just a few inches shorter than an X5 because this is as big of a vehicle as you can park in Germany. Well, Think about the X7 today. But anyway, check this out. Of course, there are two ways to get into the back. First, you can lift the glass, which is cool. A lot of vehicles do that. And then secondly, of course, you can lift the entire tailgate. But what makes it luxurious and very unique and a feature that I don't think even the Range Rover of this vintage had is this. Check it out. Yep, a soft, closed tailgate. So for 2004, this vehicle was super over-engineered, has a lot of tech that even a lot of modern cars don't have. First of all, keyless entry. So if I have the fob on me, I can come up to the door and it unlocks. Pretty neat, right? But there's way more tech than that because you get into the Touareg and you're greeted by this big steering wheel with steering wheel buttons. Not that rare for 2004, but it does a couple of cool things. You've got this completely mysterious unlabeled button here on the left side of the steering wheel. You push that button and it actually engages and disengages the backlighting on the steering wheel at night so it's less of a distraction. There's an identical button on the other side of the steering wheel. Once again, completely unlabeled and that, well that's a heated steering wheel because this car has the cold weather group. But then there's one more feature that is cool even cool for modern day standards, and even a feature a lot of modern day cars don't have, and that's proximity alert. But the way it works is completely bizarre. The Touareg has these sonar sensors at the front of the vehicle that tell me how close I am to hitting an object, like my dad in this case. And it actually, it shows up right here on the dashboard how close I am. So it starts green, and then it goes orange, and then it goes red when you're super close to an object. But it also does it in the back, and there's actually, See, now my dad's running in front of the car and it's beeping. But if I put it in reverse, I get the same green, yellow, red sensors, 
but in the back and I can see it in the rear view mirror because it's mounted on the top of the actual trunk. So I see him back there and backing up sensors, sensors, sensors. Oh, 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 orange, 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 and then red. There you go. Pretty cool stuff. And for us Americans, Volkswagen even thought of our freedom. That's right, they gave us a gun holder under, well, a gun holder, a cubby underneath the seats that you would never know was there unless you saw this video. Oh look, a wallet. How convenient. Now at this point in the video, you may be wondering how much did we pay for this 2004 Touareg? Well, let me give you some information so you can take a better more educated guess at it. First, we bought it pretty much from the original owner, and he had a stack of papers about this thick for all the repairs. And two of the critical repairs that were done, basic maintenance at the dealership, all this was done at the dealership, is a timing belt, expensive, and alternator, which I believe is water-cooled, also expensive. And everything in this vehicle works as it should. There are no real tears, uh, there's no weird smell, and there's really nothing that I could point a finger at to say this is not good except for one huge thing and that is of course on the hood if you've noticed this vehicle has been hail damaged and that for a 15 year old vehicle means that it could pretty much be written off now it's got about 125,000 miles on it and there are two other things i want to show you before you take a guess first and foremost he just replaced the tires so the tires are brand new it's kind of a shame because we're hoping they have to swap out some more all-terrain type tires on this if we do intend which we will take it off-road and secondly there are places like right here where a little bit of the chrome is peeling off so if you look right by the shifter there a little bit of the chrome is peeling off and then if you follow me back here there's a little bubbling on the VW logo uh, and that's about all that's wrong with it except of course for the normal scrapes no weird smells drives perfectly down the road. So how much do you think we paid for it? Take a guess. And if you're still not convinced that this is as luxurious as a Range Rover at the time, let me throw some more numbers at you. 11 as in 11 speakers, 8 as in 8 airbags, and we haven't even gotten to the state-of-the-art well at least for 2004 infotainment you of course also have things like by Xeon headlights squirters for those headlights but remember I promised to let you know and show you just how good this is on road and remember it's got to be as good as a BMW X5 at the time and Volkswagen had that covered as well so let's start with what's under the hood now to keep up with BMW, you got to have the power plant, or in this case, power plants to match the company from Bavaria. And Volkswagen did that and so much more. Now in the US, we only had, in 2004 at least, three engine options. There was the base V6. There was this wonderful, silky smooth 4.2 liter V8 that put out just over 300 horsepower and 300 pound foot of torque. Basically the same power plant that you got in the Audi A8. And of course, there was the crazy, whoever would have thunk you could shoehorn it under the hood, 10 cylinder, that's right, 10 cylinder diesel option that if you ever decide to buy, will eat you out of house and home because it is so incredibly complicated and expensive to work on. But in Europe, there were more engine options, including, get this, out of the Bentley, the W12. Talk about well, a wide breadth of available options. A six cylinder, an eight cylinder, a 10 cylinder, and a 12 cylinder. Now that is a power plant moonshot. So what's it like to drive on the road? Well, let's give it the beans. Six speed, very smooth in about seven seconds, zero to 60. But here's the interesting thing. I actually got to drive one of these on the Autobahn, and when you start going very fast on the Autobahn, which you can in this car, it actually hunkers down because of the air suspension. And I believe that this model, the V8, back in the day was governed to about 130 miles an hour. The speedometer says 160, but I think 
Volkswagen said 130 was as fast as you could go. Now, the W12, I don't know how fast that could go, but I bet you it was at least 155. Let's talk about what makes this Volkswagen so good on the road, better than an X5. And that's the suspension. Of course, it's four-wheel independent suspension with unibody construction. Not all that special, but the actual suspension system is special because it's four-corner air suspension. And it's also adaptive. Let me show you what it can do. So the lowest level on the Touareg is called load level. It gets just 6.29 inches of ground clearance. So that's if you're getting people inside, like my grandparents, or you're loading stuff into the trunk, it sits nice and low. Then when you start driving, you pull it up to street level. That's 7.3 inches of ground clearance. It's great for driving around. It hugs the road pretty nice, but say you start hitting some dirt, some rocks. Well, then you jack it up into the off-road level. So that, of course, 9.64 inches of ground clearance. So we've gone from 6.29 to 9.64 inches of ground clearance. Three inches, over three inches of difference, and we're not even to the highest setting. That's called extra, and it's limited to just 15 miles an hour, and it's for extreme off-road use. That jacks the Touareg up to an astonishing 11.8 inches of ground clearance. 11.8, that is more than that Jeep Wrangler Rubicon you see behind me. But it goes further than just adjustable height suspension because as I discussed, this car also has adaptive, continuously adaptive actually suspension. And I have three different settings, comfort, auto, and then sport. And when I dial it into sport, it really firms everything up. Comfort, nice and soft and squishy. Oh, just like these amazing seats. Now, Tommy, at the beginning of this video, I said that this Touareg is as good as a Wrangler off-road. Yeah. And of course, we have the TFL off-road index where we measure such things as transfer cases, locking differentials. Yeah. And here's the crazy part. Anything that you could get on that vehicle and we'll go over it, you could actually get in this vehicle. But let's start with a number that is actually better in this vehicle than in the Wrangler. And that is breakover angle and ground clearance yep so what I want you to do is I want you to put this into its maximum off-road height yep how high is that uh, it's 11.8 inches it's 11.8 inches almost 12 inches of ground clearance yeah from the factory the Rubicon Wrangler has about well about two fists of height between the tire and the fender in its load mode or its lowest mode the Touareg has well, but less than one fist. So now let's watch what happens when Tommy puts it into the extra off-road mode. And we'll set up the camera in such a way that you can see the height of the Wrangler and what happens to the Turak. So check it out in its highest off-road mode. I now actually have about the same amount of clearance from the tire to the wheel well. Remember I said that you could get anything that that comes with in terms of off-roady stuff on this, and I mean that, let me show you. So first and foremost, it has a low transfer case. You can switch into it using this rotary dial by putting it into low. And then the next click over, it actually has a locking center differential, which you'd probably expect from a vehicle of this vintage, but, Ours actually comes with a rear locking differential. So now you have a center lock and a rear lock, which is really moving it up the ORI scale. But this is where it gets crazy. You could also get available, I think in Europe, because I've never seen one in America, a front locking differential. And perhaps the craziest thing, the thing that the Wrangler has that very few other vehicles have, except maybe the power wagon. You know what I'm talking about? Check it out. Look right there, this is the special off-road supplement to the manual. You can get a disconnecting sway bar. That's right. You could actually get a disconnectable sway bar in the Touareg, giving it essentially the same gear, off-road gear, that you can get in that Wrangler. If you're wondering if this is a true off-roader, it actually allows you to lock it into its highest mode, up to 15 miles an hour. So if you've got the diff in low, if you've got your center and your rear locked up, you got this engaged, it's probably as good as a Wrangler. Is it as good as a Wrangler? You bet we're gonna find out. And in case you guys are wondering how the Touareg does its magic tippy toe bit, well, it's right here, check it out. Underneath this back load cover is 
a little tank. And that's where it stores all that compressed air so that it could raise itself and lower itself. There's also some really cool like 2000 bit parts here, like for instance right here. Look, you get a six CD changer. Hey Tommy, think there's any CDs in the changer? <laughs> I'm sure there are. Let's see. No. Empty. Empty. But you also get not one but two 12 volt outlets. You actually forgot one thing here, Dad, which is pretty cool. So you've heard of prop rods for hoods. How about a prop rod? Check this out for the rear trunk area. So now I can get to the spare without the cover falling down all the time. Yeah, but dude, that spare is not going to work for off roading. <laughs> uh, no, not really. But we do have a complete set of tools, don't we? Including like a special lug nut remover because those lug nuts are kind of weird. Yeah, for sure. So if you think that 11.8 inches of ground clearance is impressive, listen to some of these stats. Water fording in max height, 22.8 inches. Approach angle, 28 degrees. Departure angle, 27 degrees. And breakover, 27 degrees. That's actually almost five better than the Wrangler Unlimited Rubicon, which is just 22.6 at breakover. So in terms of numbers, the Touareg is so impressive off-road. Yeah, but it's a little slow, Tommy. Yes, the suspension's a little old. 120,000 miles, it'll slow down. Right, it's got a built-in ski pass-through. You wouldn't want to damage this beautiful leather by cutting it with your ski. So there you have it, perfect Colorado car. Throw your skis in there, and the interior of the car is completely and utterly safe. So have I convinced you that that vehicle is as luxurious as a Range Rover, as on-road Autobahn capable as a BMW X5, and as off-road capable as a Wrangler? I'm guessing not, but you know what? At TFL, we like to show and not tell. So in the next video in this series, we're going to take it off-road and put it up against the Wrangler. One way to find out, can it go, can it keep up, and can it be as good and as capable when the dirt gets dirty and the cars get muddy. Come back next time and we'll find out. Thanks for watching. Remember, check out TFLcar.com for more news, views, and of course, crazy VW Touareg, or do you say Touareg reviews? Oh yeah, and we did promise to let you know how much that cost. Well, if you've noticed, it's got a little bit of hail damage on the hood. So we got it for the bargain price of $4,600. Now, that is just an incredible bargain, as long as the air suspension doesn't break.